Hi, Team Flyer. Welcome once again to this beautiful day, whatever day you're listening to. <laughs> but here we're here is a Wednesday, of course. Um, to the Always Blue podcast. Where else? What else? Today we have a beautiful guest once again. I uh, she just she just makes me laugh endlessly. endlessly. <laughs> she just makes me laugh a whole bunch. You kind of sort of hear her in the background. <laughs> we, we already started our conversation and we're just all hyped up basically. <laughs> there you go. So without further ado, hearing her in the background, Natasia. Uh, Hi guys. Just, hello again. It is, Hi. It is so much fun having you, I swear. Like you just, I, I, like I was telling you earlier, I woke up so sleepy because I like, I stayed up later and I was like, all right, I, I just, I'm just sleepy, period. Okay. It's life. And you just like, <laughs> life. my thing. It's like, when are we not sleeping, actually? Right, and absolutely. Please. Goodness gracious. <laughs> oh, and, and the thing I look forward to the most is, like, I need it to be 10 o'clock and record. <laughs> I need to talk to you. <laughs> or spark. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> it's so much fun. <clears throat> All right. So um, today, as the two Latinas that we are, and we're talking about more representation, not only in Hollywood, specifically, because we were talking about that two seconds ago, and we'll, we'll leave <laughs> Back, we'll lead back into it because we want we to. We were starting the podcast it. without you guys, honestly. Exactly. We were just like, oops. oops. <laughs> we should be recording this because this is too yeah. good. <laughs> like, this is what the podcast is about today. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so, like, yeah, last time we recorded, we recorded like a good 40 something minutes of the podcast and we continued talking for an hour. Like, yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is what life is all about. Just, just, just completely. Oh, um, my goodness. So we're talking about, like I said, the Latin community, Latin community today and what it means to us and what it is and like all the stigmas and whatnot. Does it all fit in a 45 minute gap of like the podcast? Mm, no. <laughs> so <laughs> is there more coming? Who knows? Probably knowing us. Um, <laughs> it is something that we're passionate about. So let's see, Natasha, where are your roots from? Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, as far as nationality, I'm American. I was born here in the United States, um, or more specifically, Washington. But ethnicity-wise, my father was born in Cali, Colombia, and then moved to New York when he was like about 11 or 12. And my mother was born here in New York, and she's African American. But they like, if we start asking ancestry DNA, uh, what I am, we're gonna get like a whole full bookload of like one percent and two percent in random places. Like for example, I found out that I'm like one percent Scandinavian. I don't know how the frick that happened. <laughs> Uh, and, I, and I don't know who I need to talk to to be like, well, like, who did this? Um, but, to, but to sum it up and to simplify it, I am Afro-Latina. Um, definitely. So I, I remember asking you this specifically, where are your roots from? Instead of, um, I'd, like, I didn't ask you where you're from because, like, even someone like me, which I know my roots are literally from everywhere, I'd be like, oh, my father is from Ecuador, my mother's from mm-hmm. Venezuela, I was born in Venezuela, I grew up in the States, and then I moved to Europe, and then I'm back. Like, it's such a, one of those crazy mixes, of like, oh, where are you from? Like, from around the world. That's what I was, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm from around the world. Like, I was lucky enough in, in the most um, symbolic way, to say the least. You know, I grew up in different places around the world, which is great. Um, no matter how hard it was, it's still pretty great. I'm so grateful for it. And you're from everywhere. So yeah. like when someone asks you where are you from, what do you respond? Um California, because I was raised there for the majority of my life. But again, I was also raised everywhere. So I've spent three years somewhere, four years here, two years there. So it's the majority of it, California. I definitely claim California, I guess. Yeah, for sure. But it's it's a complicated answer. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it's a complicated question. And it's so beautiful. It feels like so simple. And you're like, no, it's not really. And, and like, we've gotten to a point here in 2020 that you're like, we got to break it down for you because you need to know. Yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. Like you said, you're Afro-Latina. Like, I'm personally not. I'm just Latino. But the beauty of it of like this latin american afro-american i mean uh, afro-latino uh community um that we have uh, just the the girl you introduced me to as well just uh came to mind like we have no color Mm -hmm. as well Mm -hmm. Um, absolutely what are your thoughts what are your thoughts of that 
so uh, for those who don't know, I, and I, I, I always forget that this is still a term that people are still learning today. And even I learned it with like in the last six years, uh, Afro-Latino are Latin Americans with significant, if not majority African ancestry. Uh, and as I said before, my father is a tan Colombian that has African ancestry as well, but not as significant as his indigenous roots and features are. But if you were to continue to zoom through our family tree, and even outside of our tree, you would find that Latinos in general come in all forms. Like we have long, flowy hair, we have skin, we have dark skin, thick hair, curly hair, light eyes, dark eyes. Latinos come in all different hues. But there is like this misconception that Latinos look one specific way. And it's because when it comes to, rep and we were talking about this before, like when it comes to representation and portrayal, especially uh, in the film and media, we really just see the white Latin Americans with typical Southern European features. We don't really get to see um, the huge lot that is Latino in general. But if we were to like open up some history books and we would see a clear piece of information that is constantly overlooked. And it was by me at a time as well, like a huge thing for me. Um, but in even some situations, not even mentioned, but the, when the Europeans brought slave ships to Americas, it wasn't just the United States of America. They were also sent to Latin America and the Caribbean. And I'm about to go on a really huge tangent. I'm so sorry. But do not be sorry, girl. We talked about the last episode. Don't be sorry. This is who you are. That's right. And you're speaking your gosh darn truth. I have like this perfect example that I'm thinking of. Um, there is this beautiful island that we have here on this earth. And it's separated into two countries. Um, and I think they separated back in like the 1930s, somewhere like in the mid 1930s, um, after decades of power struggle between Spain and France. And that is the Dominican Republic and that is Haiti, um, which are perfect examples of how colonialism shaped the geography and the economy and the psychology of those who lived there then and even today. But those two places are also a perfect example of how colorism alive, colorism is alive and well, um, you know, I'm actually going to digress on that because that's a whole other podcast and a possibly a lecture of history and struggles and genocide that existed there. So well, I'm going to hold up on that part. <laughs> but I see this to say, uh, the French colonized on one side, which is why you'll see in Haiti they speak French. Uh, Spain colonized on the other, which is why they speak Spanish. Um, but I say this because slaves were not just brought to America and to believe otherwise essentially creates this ignorance and this dangerous idea of how a Latino person is supposed to look. And when we show you ourselves and you see that we don't meet your expectations, then there is this level of denial that begins to happen where someone like me and many others begin to wonder, like, am I enough? Am I okay with who I am? Uh, and will I ever be enough? Um, and so that is kind of like my essential idea or thought on Latinos and how we have no color and how we come in all different sizes and shapes and Exactly. Colors, <laughs> of course. Right, colors. I, yeah, yeah I, I agree, obviously. How can I not with everything? Because um, I know it's so easy to stereotype. I know we stereotype different, you know, cultures and, and for the way they look. And you're like, oh, this is just automatically this. With me and my persona, uh, my particular case, better said, I've been, people were like, oh, you're Indian because for some reason oh you're um mm. asian as well for some reason mm. I'm like, no i'm latin and and i know it's oddly enough people still don't look at like if you're not from latin america and you see me you wouldn't think of from latin america which i find really strange because i feel like yeah. i'm 110 percent i look latin american <laughs> and i have uh lots of different friends uh from latin america and they look they're 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 white they're literally white they cannot tan <laughs> they go outside and they burn <laughs> and they're yeah. like, oh my god and she's from argentina and i'm like exactly she was born and raised and she has dark hair like they're not all um or they can have blonde hair as well i feel that's something else that's like really different for people like oh my god you don't have blonde, like natural blonde hair no you don't i'm like well, we do <laughs> <laughs> like how can we not like have you heard your history <laughs> it's so true though <laughs> um and i do love the fact that um through you like i said i i we found out or i found <laughs> out uh what's her name platina and her name i can't remember her name right now but her instagram is that her instagram handle and i'm also gonna have her on the show actually because we connected because of this because skin has no color and i'm like 
race the roof. That's a, that's something that people need to know. And uh, yeah. obviously stop that stereotype of like, oh, you have to be dark skin and dark color, hair color and whatnot. Mm-hmm. My follow-up question was with uh, what you were saying about this, that I remember that you told me that it took you a little bit to recognize that you're Afro-Latina. And yeah. How, how did that go about? Uh, so oh, this is, I, I'm going to give you a warning. I might tear up because this is always such a, it's, it's a bit tear up in a good way because I, I love like the journey that I went through. And it just makes me um, so emotional to talk about it. But in my early childhood, I claimed to be black. Uh, and really black only because even though I had a tan Colombian father, my skin color more so resembled my mother's along with my lips and my other features. In fact, my nickname growing up from my aunts, my uncles and my grandparents was Negrita, which means that, you know, as you know, little black girl. And even at school, my la- even though my last name was Sanchez, but if you were to ask my teachers, um, you know, how many kids in their school were black versus Latino, I get, and this actually did happen twice. Uh, they would put me with the black side and they would not recognize me as Latino. Um, so I called myself black and I was okay with it. Like it didn't, it didn't bother me. It wasn't until I moved to Los Angeles where uh, this huge melting pot existed. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time that I had actually been exposed to urban life because up until then I was living on military bases, uh, which is very, very sheltered. Um, and by this time I'm older. So the content to which I'm watching on television and movies are changing. They're getting older. The topics are getting, uh, are growing. And I began to see a pattern, which is, if black people are on TV, it's because they're either playing the gangster or the thug or the best friend that's never the lead. And if they were the lead character, Hollywood really wouldn't really give it much attention. So, uh, or like even when I would travel around Los Angeles area, I noticed that the areas that were predominantly black were surrounded by liquor stores and the schools were of low grade and there was a lot of gangs and violence, but I'm a child and I know nothing at this point about the ramifications of institutionalized racism and the visuals that it birthed. So all I saw was what was on TV confirmed my silent but like loud thought of that being black is probably not the best thing to claim. And I began to do worse than just not claim it. I began to deny it. So, and that added on another layer of pain, like me accepting the negative false perceptions of my own abilities and intrinsic worth that was followed by a rejection of my own ancestral culture. So then when you hear the words from people that you really care about, people that you look up to when they say uh, to fix the race, um, it even then proved to me that there was an issue with who I am. And me navigating that, it just became so sad, honestly. On the outside, I was professing myself, full, my full identity as Latina, um, allowing for hatred to grow on the inside for the other half of me that I refused to acknowledge, denying, um, essentially denying the part of me that my mother passed down. And it created a bigger monster than the ones I faced in my daily life. And nothing, I absolutely 100%, nothing is scarier than self-hatred and the things that I can birth. So I carried on with this throughout high school and even through like a early, a early, early adulthood. So um, it wasn't until later where I heard the term Afro-Latina and the internal battle that I was navigating through this entire time, it, when being told that I was Afro-Latina must have been painted all over my face because the person who told me the news then followed up with uh, giving me instructions to wake up every single morning and to look at myself in the mirror and to profess to myself that I am a strong black woman. And the person who told me that news was my stepfather, who is a black man who stayed up countless nights giving me lectures and debunking all the false information that I had been feeding myself, along with a cousin of mine who was also going through her journey of self-discovery and also took it upon herself to give me articles and literature to shed all these lies. So when being told that I am Afro-Latina, again, a term that I had never heard before, I remember, I remember exactly, I was wearing a blue dress and I was sitting in silence and I digest this information And it was like shock that like radiated through my entire body. Like there were parts that like were twitching and I, I could not understand like the, the, like it felt like my body was like regenerating or becoming new because it it, it felt like it was, even if I can say, if I can be bold enough to say like maybe the, even the ancestors of 
the blood of my ancestors that was resurrecting in my veins after a lifetime of abandonment. So the first thing that came out of my mouth was, so you're telling me I don't have to choose? And there in that moment, like I, it saved me like, and I, and it came just in time because I almost didn't make it. So when I say I'm Afro Latina, I say it like it's a shield or like a medal that I've earned from going into battle. And it gives me so much pride and joy. And I never forget the journey that I went through to get it. So like, you can be both, you can choose and you don't have to pick one side. You can be both, both um, African American or African or black. And like, you know, like it can, it, you can choose both. So I told you it's going to get it's it's that's what we're all about and you know it over here we're raw we're real and if if we cry if we if we um if we don't it's all good it's all good (laughs) um that was a very moving story I was like I remember you telling me part of it and the fact that this what you told me now you've officially told all of us of course the Mm -hmm. whole story and it it's I have so many thoughts (laughs) (laughs) I feel like the first thought, it's like, how can you deny someone who they are? Like, who does that? Like, how? Yeah. And what's crazy is that, like, even though I was going through, like, this this battle internally, I, it never once shaped or reshaped the views that I had of my mother. Um, and I, and I still think about that to this day. I'm like, how did you go through like this, this spiral of like self hatred, hatred for being black? And you still looked at your mother like she was like the most angelic, cause she is the most angelic thing that's ever walked this earth. My mother really is that. Um, or like the people on her side of the family, you, in in a way that you denied them. How did you not realize that you were doing that? But I, I think as I get older, I realized that the battle was more so about me. Like it was, it was really me. Um, so yeah. Yeah. It was you going through whatever you need to go through, of course, to understand who you were, who you are, better said, Mm -hmm. um, and own up to it. I mean, my second frame of thought, not in order by any means, like I said, I have so many thoughts and questions Mm -hmm. is, um, we're not really big into labels in the sense of like you know especially nowadays that you know you be who you are no matter who you are and whatnot and i do agree with that statement and i like the fact that i don't represent just one flag and i don't think i would ever do that and Uh maybe because it's my personality but also it's like you know we're we're all in this together and i don't say that lightly at all i do believe that we're all in this together we're one however i do understand that you know, before you continue in life and before you explore other options, whatever your other options are, you also need to know who you are and the base of who you are. And and yeah, of course. And more people like you should definitely speak up with that. For me, it's something that I didn't really have to deal with. My life was completely Mm -hmm. different. I was probably I don't know if the opposite, I don't know. I don't know. Kind of, I was always very detached from the word Latin, but not because I was ashamed. I don't think I've ever been ashamed of being it, but because Uh I grew up partly in the States, much like you, even though I was born in Venezuela. Uh Um, And then I grew up in Spain. I grew up in Europe. I traveled. Um, Uh Right now, I'm still feeling detached from it because, you know, I'm not the quote unquote typical Latin America. I don't have the accent. Um, I apparently don't look like it, <laughs> but that's not the <laughs> point of it, not the point of my feelings. If I look like it or not, I am Latin American. And um, so for me, when I hear those stories and when I first started talking to you and you were telling me this, I'm like, this is the kind of stories that need to be heard a lot more because I feel like people just, don't, A, don't know about them. And it's a shame because it's their mm-hmm. stories and their beautiful stories. And B, because we need to hear about um, the versatile ways of you can be a wolf a person being <laughs> from Latin America and how they can be two in one. It's, it's such a scary topic. Even like as I was, when I was reading, the, um, reading about being Afro-Latino in general and, and talking about it in general, people ask me about it. It's such a scary topic because, 
of what I went through and the amount of denial and hatred that I had that it's like sometimes I feel so ashamed of it and I feel so embarrassed to be like I I completely love who I am now I love the fact that I am both black and Latina but like there was a one point in my life where I was legit looking for soap to scrub off the color of my skin it's like it's it's so hard to admit that like I was wrong that I was woefully ignorant um it's so hard for me to admit that I denied and it's not even just denying who I am but I denied uh my family members in so many ways uh it just it feels it feels so shameful and though I know that this is like a huge testimony and I and I 100% agree that like other people can learn from it and they can gather from it and learn and maybe they won't have to take as much time as I did, but it's still so, it's so such a hard topic. It still is. Yes, it is. I mean, going about it, even through this, you know, podcast of many other stuff that we're going to create together, of course, you know, it's still a very delicate matter and you're like, Oh, should we talk about it? Can we talk about it? I'm like, you know, Mm -hmm. of course we can. I feel like the first thing we need to do is acknowledge your feelings and what you went through and and the fact that you're able to talk about it i feel like that's also something super important oh yeah that you're like all mm-hmm. right i'm here i'm ready i am afro latina i'm owning this and exactly what we just said it can be an inspiration to many other people um our age older and especially younger generations yeah who who need that? I feel like you need that. I feel like now I'm definitely leading not entirely on purpose to the next thing we wanted to say, but it was like the lack of representation. This is how we yeah. started the podcast before the podcast rec- <laughs> we enjoyed it. <laughs> we were talking about that lack of representation and how we. I feel strongly about this because I'm doing everything mm-hmm. I can. So like for me, that's what I was trying to say as well. Like Even though I don't feel particularly 110% Latin because of my cultural background of where I lived I still feel the need and the desire and the passion to be celebrated and to be seen on screen yeah absolutely like I grew up here I love the states as much as I love Spain as much as I love wherever I lived because it brought me a lot of value to my life wherever Mm -hmm. but that's once again that's a personality thing however no matter how much TV I see or media I, I see, it's like, I want to see myself as well. No matter mm-hmm. the shape or color, I don't care if it's someone completely black and like, oh, I'm from Colombia, much like you, or someone who looks like me or someone who is blonde and white, you know, and is like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm also from Colombia, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because there are Colombians and Venezuelans who actually are blonde and white. Oh, yeah. My grandmother was one of them, actually, without going any further. <laughs> I 100% I believe you, it. yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Like, she was white and super blonde, and people thought she was from the States or French for some reason, and she's like, mm-hmm. no, I'm from Venezuela. This is the way I look. <laughs> and that was like a while ago. Um, so yeah, so now transferring over a little bit to like what you were saying before about the lack of representation. Yeah, it is it's alive and well, uh, the lack of representation that is happening. Oh my goodness. Um, I feel like we, we're getting there again, topics like these, uh, people who, uh, are bringing these types of conversations to light are essentially enabling things like, uh, for more representation to begin. Um, it's going to take a long, long time for it to like, to fully, equal out or match up to uh, what we actually see on television today. But I mean, there is, I mean, we have, as I was saying before, like Eva Longoria has a production company mm-hmm. and she is, uh, you know, making films that cater to the Latino community. Uh, Zoe Saldana has a production company. It's in a star. Um, America Ferreira had one. I think she, I think the company is no longer standing, but she had one at one point. Um, and you have Latino directors. One of them is, uh, her name is Aurora Guero. Guerrero. I have a hard time rolling. I have a hard time rolling my R's. Um, <laughs> just letting you guys know to this day. I have exactly. the hard, And I do this thing sometimes. And this is where my, my, um, my dad gets so mad because he says that I sound like a Dominican. But like sometimes I turn my R's into L's. <laughs> And he's like, you sound Dominican. You need to stop doing that. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> exactly. It's the way I speak, okay? So I can't do anything about it. Just like, let me live. Can I live? 
Um, that's a debate on its own. I know that for a fact because that's like something you know within the Latin American community. Just those accents. Those yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what did you say? Oh, okay. We, we got oh, you. Yeah. Don't worry. Ab- uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, Guerrero. I think, what was her first name again? Aurora. Uh, Aurora. Aurora Guerrero. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool mm-hmm. beans. There you go. Um, but uh, a really an awesome uh, uh, director as well. I mean, we're, we're getting there. Still not enough. But yeah, definitely. I, I, I love talking about it, of course, and I feel like the more, you know, like, this is with every single topic in life, like, you need to talk about it, it needs to be seen more, heard more, etc. I agree yeah. that we're still a long way away. Mm-hmm. Um, I was reading the facts the other day. Um, I, I don't have them on hand. I will pull them up in a second. But um, the percentage was really, really low of the Latin American community being on, like, in Hollywood and not only on screen but also mm-hmm. behind the scenes of course in production mm-hmm. and directing and whatever um with the people you just mentioned uh eva longoria uh america ferrera saying their names in spanish because why the heck not <laughs> um, you can roll your r's girl do it yeah it's my last name and I, i'm very proud <laughs> my double r my last name um I feel like they do. They're they're they've been working for this on this. Sorry for a, for a while. For I don't know yeah. how many years to be honest, but I'm, I'm assuming <laughs> more or less tenish, give or take a few. I feel like Evelyn Goria. I, for as far, far as far as I remember, she's been doing the most. Mm-hmm. Um, I, for, I have to I have to look at her up on Instagram, sadly, because I'm trying to remember the name I was thinking about before, and it was the Latin American community. It was. Uh, the woman behind uh, We All Grow Latina that I'm trying to find out right now. And essentially what happened the past few days when I was looking at all this like information and whatnot, I looked at it for two points of view. On one hand is what we were talking about. They're doing more Latinos in Hollywood. Um, I'll hear, hear the facts. There you go. So it's like, did you know Latinos are the largest growing minority in the U.S. and represent 25% of the box office, yet we're nearly invisible in Hollywood. We only make up 3% in front and behind the camera. Uh-huh. So that was one of the biggest facts, of course. Uh-huh. Um, I'm not getting super sidetracked because, this, like I said, there's a lot of thoughts happening uh-huh. with this. So let's lead up to what you were saying about the production companies and talk us a little bit about what you do as well. Yeah. So, uh, my production company, Marvel Maverick, we are doing projects really that dispel these norms. We make sure to put people of color, Latinos, black, um, even Asians, uh, if it just people, minorities, people of color in general at the forefront of these projects, telling stories of courage, of love, strength really emulating the actual stories that actually happen within these communities and never really get told because they're always overlooked. Um, but we are doing what we need to, to make sure that the next generation is prepared and educated and moved, uh, you know, kind of making up for the lack of education that we didn't, that, you know, that we had. So, um, we, I think in one particular project, I can't, <laughs> it's so hard to like talk about it cause I can't say what the project is, but, uh, <laughs> I need to be careful because I'm going to get like a few phone calls. Why did you mention that? Um, uh, for this one particular project that we're doing, um, we have, uh, we have, we want to make sure that we have a Latino production company, Latinx production company that is producing the project along with us. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the director who is directing the project is also Latino. We wanted to make sure that, uh, the the cast and the characters because the story takes place um, in Los Angeles. We wanted to make sure that they represent actually the Los Angeles that we actually see on a regular basis, and not the Los Angeles that we only see on television and movies. Exactly. Uh, there we go. Oh, it's yes. so exciting. Absolutely. Uh, yes. And so it's like we're, we we want to make sure that like not only are we talking about the things that we want to do, but that we're actually doing it. Uh, we're actually reaching out, and it's hard sometimes because it's already such a, you know, you were saying the percentage, it's already such a small pool of people that we can contact that um, have directed before that studios are comfortable with because they know who they are. They know they're, they know that they can do it. Uh, Cause that's like the other half of the battle. You know, when yeah, you do bring exactly. someone in the studio, has to, the studio has to say, okay, fine. Then you can, 
you know, you can bring that person in. Um, but it's, it's already a small, small pool. I think even for like another story that we were doing, um, we were looking for specifically, uh, black female directors. Um, and that pool was so small and, um, the when we finally managed to like nab one eventually like no not eventually instantly her schedule became full and she was nabbed for another project so it's like there is a small amount of people that we bring onto a project and we have to do it in a timely manner if not then we're kind of like snatched of course because there's just very few of them yes so like we have to continue to bring in more like you know actors i mean like how many times can you say yeah we have this movie and we want you know the this latin we want a, a Latinx woman to play the lead. And then like, you only have like maybe three or two that actually fit like the age range and the, the look that you're supposed to have. But like, if you were to switch that character to, let's say a white person, you would find that there are more actresses available and accessible to play that part. So there is a huge problem in Hollywood. And I'm, I'm really glad that we get to take part in the change of it. And I'm hoping that this movement that happened that is happening right now um, will change it for the better and for good. Like it's to where it's not even an issue ever again. I feel like that's, that's definitely coming. I feel like right about now there's so many people involved and there's still going to be so many people that's going to be involved even more so mm-hmm. that it's going to be like that definite move. Like would it take five years, 10 years, 20 hopefully not 20 but regardless of Mm -hmm. that we don't know how long it's going to take to make the whole shift happen but i do see it more definite and it's just been building been building been building i um you definitely brought up you definitely brought up interesting facts like you were saying that you have to snatch them up because they're so specific and such a Mm -hmm. a pool that's so small that um, so small that you really like it, it it's tricky of course Mm-hmm. Um, going back to right before this question, I finally looked. I was looking it up while you were talking as well. Of course, what I wanted to say, and the woman behind We All Grow Latina, which is an extraordinary uh, company itself, to you know m- have that movement of Latina power, Latinos, Latinas. I mean, it's definitely I feel catered a bit more to women, but regardless of that, mm-hmm. the woman behind that, when I was reaching out to her and just finding out a bit more, a bit more, she told me, of course, what we just talked about, you know, more Latinos in Hollywood and the change that's currently going through. And um, currently enough YouTubers, <laughs> we like there was a Dr. Doolittle um, screening the other day, like a preview for the kids and the family. And everyone who went in this particular one <laughs> were either the YouTubers who are all about Latin America, who either speak Spanish or English to the Republic. Mm-hmm. But you can tell that's the background. Usually people in LA right now specifically so because that's where the screening was, of course, the premiere. Mm-hmm. And what you said there's more people now one thing to talk about it of course which i think is always useful because that way you, people you know know more about it but obviously doing something and i like the fact that out of i don't know why dr doolittle i, I haven't gone that far to find out why is that movie <laughs> like why did you want all latin americans you know to go to the premiere and, and promote it that way I don't think they speak Spanish in the movie. I don't, haven't seen it yet. I saw the 1990 mm-hmm. something version of it, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I thought that it was like, oh, that's an interesting take on it. So the way you're promoting the film is actually bringing more um, light to the Latin American community, one way or another. You know how like mm-hmm. we have all sorts of influencers, Instagrammers, whatever you want to call them promoting it's like oh it's all literally latin america and that's mm-hmm. interesting i like at least mm-hmm. i thought it was because i was like all right marketing yeah i know absolutely 100 percent. yeah i love that um so that's why i was like trying to find her because it was like oh my god i knew it was something like super specific apart from that another thing i was trying to find and it just escapes my mind which doesn't make me happy because it's a show i do watch it's a netflix show about kids in LA and they're all from Latin America. I don't know if you know, it's a, it's a comedy one. It's like, it's based on real life of like their life in LA and the dangers it has and like the neighborhoods and what you were saying before. Hey, what is this know, called? I'm trying to find the name for you and I still can't find it. <laughs> uh, I was like, wait a second, it's right there and I love it. And it's such a good show. 
Um, and I feel like it doesn't get enough props. And anytime I'm trying to find, like, I was looking, Googling, of course, like this Netflix series, and they're like, it shows a lot of, um, it shows anything from like Narcos to like uh, Spanish shows from Spain. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not looking for any of those. Thank you very much. <laughs> I do have Jane the Virgin again, but because it is on Netflix. Uh-huh. Um, I know it's a random question. I mean, we we talked two seconds about Gina Rodriguez as as who she is, but before mm-hmm. talking about her or or in general, actually, did you follow Jane the Virgin or it's like Jane the Virgin and like a uh, Ugly Betty, for example, with America Fraterna? Did you follow those? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I did Ugly Betty for, I think I watched like the first season of Ugly Betty. Um, but it wasn't, this was also when, when Ugly Betty came on, this was the time where streaming was not really available. So that meant that I had to be in front of the TV uh, to watch the episode and we did not have DVR. So uh, the TV was for the most part hogged by my brother playing his video games. So I was, I, you know, you, brother. Yeah, right. I, I I did not get to watch too much of Ugly Betty, but I did. I did watch every single episode of um, Jane the Virgin, a TV show. I I genuinely loved too. They were really good about uh, hiring uh, Latino Latinx. I have that's another thing that I have to start getting right to say properly, especially in Hollywood, is Latinx. Um, it's Latinx. Yeah, we just went through yeah. the change, or we're going through the change as we speak. Yeah, like we're I, going I'm through still. It not used to it. I mean, not to disrespect by any means. But no, 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 no. It's just, like, you know, you, for years you've been saying one thing and now it's like, okay, well, this is something that we should probably start saying now. Um, so I'm, I'm still adjusting to it and having to catch myself, but they're really good about hiring Latinx writers and directors, uh, and actors. So, I mean, I really do commend, uh, the CW Network for that, and um, they did a wonderful the job. I mean, it's definitely did, telenovela yeah. come to life in English. Both of them are because Ugly Betty yeah. started actually in Venezuela, and then now it's all over the world, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I, much like you, I think when Ugly Betty came out, I was definitely much younger, and my life was in the middle of chaos. So TV was definitely not a priority, nor yeah. I think that was in my life. So I don't, I didn't see the whole thing, even though I know I've seen enough to know that I like it, obviously, and I'm support it. Um, Jane the Virgin, I just finished it last year, not only because it finished, but I had to like catch up with it because I lived in Spain and Spain's a little bit, um, delayed with shows. Yeah. So when we moved here, um, I actually went on kind of a really big binge watch actually, cause I really liked the show. I like what they did to no, it. It was I good. Liked, it was a really good show. Um, how was written? I liked that they spoke Spanish. Um, they could have spoken, I guess, a little bit more, but still they had the subtitles. Um, I have like two random questions. Like I'm still trying to look up the show I'm telling you about, which I'll get to mm-hmm. when I'll get to it. Hopefully throughout the episode. And if not, we'll I'll put it somewhere. But <laughs> as I'm scrolling through my Netflix while I'm talking to you, because I'm listening, obviously, I have also Mr. Iglesias, who's also in LA, actually. Mm-hmm. He's um oh, what's his name? He's like Puffy Iglesias, Mr. Puff. Like he's a comedian from Mexico like quite famous uh-huh. that I had no idea about because once again, I feel like I'm delayed with everything that happens in Latin America. <laughs> um, I liked that show a lot as well. It was, it's a very quick, uh, easy show to watch. And I actually heard about that show. Uh, I looked at, I, I was looking up online um, uh, shows that had, uh, a, a strong Latinx presence. I think what that show came up as uh, one of the options too. And I haven't started my Netflix for it's like what to watch next, but I watch it. I watch a TV show at a time. I can't keep intermingling because it just, it gets so confusing. I have to binge watch one show at a time, but it is on my, it is on my list. Yeah. That's like really quick. Like I saw that really quickly and I liked it. I like what they, like it's a very lighthearted show. There's, so yeah, I know many shows now because well now in general, cause I really want to know obviously. And um, one of the one of the many shows was that one, fun, decent. I would love to catch up with you after you've seen those shows, of course. Mm-hmm. It's the one I was saying, I finally found it, and no wonder I could I could remember the name right now. Not that it has a weird name, but like it didn't come un- naturally on my block. Oh yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Have you seen it? No, it's all, okay. it's also it's on, on my list. list. Yeah. <laughs> like those are the first ones that I saw. I fell in love with that show. That show is so well done. 
And not only the kids are freaking amazing actors, which I always come in Netflix because I usually get a lot of good kid actors, you know, but we're not going to get into that right there. No, because I see a lot of, not kid shows, but shows where like the kids are the main characters. And on my block, it's just incredible acting. And um, without spoiling anything at all, it does go through what you were talking about early on when you talked about Lita grew up in LA and what you saw and like how you were ashamed of being black and all these sorts of things. Mm-hmm. So I really like the show. I know um, what from what I see right now currently on Netflix, another season is coming. I don't know how many seasons they have. Oh, they have two seasons. So the season three is coming and I hope they continue. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of um, material to work on and to work with, mm-hmm. so work with one way or another yeah sometimes it gets a little bit too crazy because it add the fun the comedy in it of course but regardless mm-hmm. of that it's it's that's the one I was talking about yeah I that's that is that for sure is on my list I do remember putting that on there um there there is um this production company that I believe is the one that produced that show which is called crazy cat lady productions um uh, and then, I, I know. Name. I do too. I do so much. Um, I, I resonate with the crazy cat lady. <laughs> um, <laughs> <me too. laughs> I like, what should we call our company? Crazy cat lady. Just, just right. No, I, some of these companies have the craziest names, and I love it. It just so it shows me so how Hollywood has so much creativity. But um, yeah, so I've, I have heard about the show. That show is on my list as well of like things to watch next. So, yeah. Absolutely. And so for good. for wow. last show wise, actually, because we just randomly got into this topic, was uh yeah. one day at a time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I that got, one it got picked up by another network too. Did you know that? It did, yes. Yeah. Which I'm very, very happy it did. Um it is um interesting. It is a show. I don't know, have you seen any of it just yet or not yet? No, I haven't seen it, but I have been following the cats on Instagram and the um uh, and uh um on twitter yeah they they do a wonderful job obviously they really do all of them because they're amazing actresses and actors in general Mm -hmm. um like rita mornado and the mom i forgot i forget her the mom's name right now but the actress justina gracias justina machado Machado. Machado, yes i love her uh such just wonderful people and so the two cents i have on it really quickly once again is one um people don't know that these are amazing actress and actors mm-hmm, like, on this specific mm-hmm. show like i would like i saw it with my husband and he loved it and i saw it with other people like i should all be like these are like iconic <laughs> like these are mm-hmm. like you know who these people are mm-hmm. and then um the second thing the feedback that i know that it got kind of mixed reviews is because each episode is pretty dense it's kind of mm-hmm. like it goes it takes you through a whole story in just 30 minutes so as a, it depends what kind of viewer you are. It depends just the person you are, like everything else in life. Like for me, I'm okay mm-hmm. with it. Cause I know I'm going into that show knowing that like every episode you're going to like have something meaningful in it. Oh, sorry. I just hit my own microphone. <laughs> I was so passionate about what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm okay with that knowing what I'm going into but then a lot of times when when they were like when they canceled it in that moment a lot of people were like oh it's a little bit too not tense but like too dense better said than yeah and I'm like well we need to hear about these subjects these are Mm -hmm. really important subjects not only within the Latin community just they go like with like they 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 handle a lot of stuff they handle you know the main character which I'm pretty sure you know Mm -hmm. you'll see in the trailer like it's obvious she went to war and she's a veteran mm-hmm. and she's a woman obviously she has two kids and they deal with everything like a f- normal family and this goes anywhere from like alcoholism to like coming out of the closet to mm-hmm. everything else in between including once again within the Latin community yeah so um i'm so happy it's back i don't know i don't know where it's back though i don't know if you know and like what channel picked it up or what um company picked it up um <sighs> Yeah, I don't remember either right now. And I don't know how production is going with that. Um but I'll be I'll be looking out with I think I I think I think it's pop though. A lifetime. Pop usually does that. Oh yeah, I think it's TV. Is it pop? Yeah, it's pop. Pop TV. Yeah, just Oh yeah, I see it lit up right now. It's pop, yeah. Yeah. It was it was it was pop or lifetime that I knew. 
Yeah, Pub um, usually does that. Pub has good shows as well. Yeah, they do. Um, have you seen, um, side note for a minute, have you seen the trailer for In the Heights? No, I actually haven't. Have, do, are you familiar with the musical? Yes, I am. Sorry, yeah. So I saw this musical back in like, I want to say 2008, 2009, back when like uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda was on the show along with Karen Olivo and um, it took so long for them to finally, I, I think I heard a couple years later how they were going to make a movie and I was like, when is this movie coming out? The trailer just came out. They have like this one, this one beautiful singer. She sings like a lot of bunch of the music. Her name is Leslie Grace. Um, uh, What's her face? Oh my goodness, Lord Jesus. Don't do this to me, please. Please give me her name. Don't erase from me. The woman from, the beautiful uh, woman from uh, Orange is the New Black. Lord Jesus, help me. Oh my goodness, what is oh, her name? Oh, oh, oh. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, it's with a D, so it's in my tongue. Oh my goodness. Daphne, Daphne. Yes, Ruben yes. Vega. There you go. Yes, there you go. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so sorry, Jesus. Please forgive <laughs> I had a full-on conversation with about her like two days ago with somebody and I can't believe I just forgot everything. <laughs> Sorry. um she's in it as well so it's 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 so you have you have to see the trailer I, I mean, am totally and I don't itself. see trailers but I but you I made an exception for you I'll make an exception yeah. for you. <laughs> please it's such a, it's such a beautiful musical um it's coming out June 26 2020 I know. I'm so we have excited. a date. We have a date. June twenty sixth, twenty twenty. Here we are. We're going to watch this movie together. Oh, I was. I was so excited about this movie. You have no idea. I hear it in the voice. I feel bad for not knowing about it. This is like this. Is why I said like I'm a little bit behind. I'm trying to catch up. No, seriously. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just laugh it out. You have to. I'm like I'm catching up, people. I'm trying. I want to present my I'm, I'm on a permanent Monday. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm on a permanent Monday. I love that. That felt like <laughs> that was me when I started the conversation. I was like, I'm sleepy. <laughs> I can do this, but like I said, you're just the your uh, your freaking energy, girl. Just, oh, just you. lights me up and it's so interesting like I swear anytime I talk to you it's just like I go on talking to somebody else and I'm like oh my god I learned this 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 and this and this today and like this is like from Natasha and she said this I'm like oh my god and like I don't know it's just <laughs> I love it because it's just it gives you so much more to talk about and um oh, thank you. yeah uh, this is always this is such a treat for me Oh, that just makes it. me happy uh that just yeah, makes me absolutely. super happy because I mean that's that's what we're all about once again yeah um oh gosh there's so much more to say but we are definitely uh have to say goodbye for right now <laughs> to our viewers at least <laughs> to our listeners <laughs> at least to you guys we'll, we'll talk to you again soon We're gonna... <laughs> i know um i know your lifestyle is gonna get busy and whatnot of course as it always is not gonna get mm-hmm. i feel like it always is but we'll find a way to make sure that you know you keep coming back because I feel like this absolutely is, you know, turn this into a special, like a monthly special. Just that's it. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> it's, just, it's, like, it's like something, something with Natasha. Like I'll figure it out. But we'll the girls find... are back to talk shit. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they have some stuff to say. Hang on. <laughs> exactly. We're gonna get like deep and dirty because that's what we do. <laughs> it doesn't matter how that sounded, but you know what I mean. Like, right. We're gonna tell real thoughts. We're here. Oh my. <laughs> oh goodness all right so we know we can find you of course like we said before and the links are down below as always um rubble may uh, blah 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 always your name rubble <laughs> maverick Ma- maverick Ma- maverick yeah maverick oh once again that's a lot in me spanish whatever <laughs> I was like, i'm reading it like the way it's supposed to the way it looks like in spanish <laughs> so i i funny. can't i i have a hard time rolling my r's we're good. There we go. We're good. We're good. <laughs> like I said, I just moved back from Spain. So like a lot of my vocabulary, it's like I read it, I'm like, oh wait, that's not it's me it's Maverick, not Maverick. <laughs> like oh, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how you would say in Spanish. Whoops. Anyways. <laughs> Rebel Maverick. Yes. Yeah. I'll get there. <laughs> you look at me with so much confidence. I know. <laughs> in other words, like, wait, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> Loving it. All right, seriously, your link is going to be down below. I'm proud of everything you're doing. I'm so... Oh, thank like, you. I just, I loved uh, just having the same path as you, like crossing paths, basically. And oh, just, I know. Um, I love this. Too. I love what you're doing here. I love this. Thank you. Thank you so much. It means a whole lot, especially coming from you. My gosh. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we have to wrap it up and I don't want to, but I'm sorry, listeners. We'll be back soon. Both of us will be back <laughs> soon. Um, as for the, us, me particularly, mm -hmm. yes, the Always Believer podcast episodes come every Wednesday. Have a beautiful day. We'll definitely talk to you really, really soon. And we're out. Bye. Bye.